everyone, Josh Smith with GottaBeMobile.com. Today, I want to show you some great iOS 6 features. iOS 6 is the next version of the software that runs on your iPhone, iPod Touch, and iPad. Apple's already said that iOS 6 will be available this fall. Based on the rumors about the iPhone 5 release date, we expect sometime in September or mid-October. When Apple holds the official iPhone 5 launch event, they'll announce probably some new features for iOS 6 and the exact iOS 6 release date where you'll be able to download it to your current iPhone, iPad, and iPod Touch. Today I want to show you some of my favorite features. This is the iOS 6 beta, so you can get a sneak peek at what you'll have on your phone this fall. Siri is vastly improved. She still doesn't understand everything you say, but she can do a lot more. Open Pandora. Siri can now launch apps, and here when I open Pandora, it'll actually start playing the last station that I was listening to. Send a tweet. What would you like your message to say? Tweeting with Siri in iOS 6. I updated your tweet. Ready to send it? Yes. Siri can also okay. I sent it. send Facebook updates. Post to Facebook. What would you like your message to say? Using Siri to post a message to Facebook for a video on GottaBeMobile.com. I updated your Facebook status. Ready to post it? Yes. So as you can see, Siri's not perfect at figuring out okay. the words. I posted your Facebook status. But She's much better at sharing. We can also check sports information and stats. Show me Melky Cabrera's stats. One moment. Here's Melky Cabrera. When do the Giants play next? The Giants Dodgers game is tomorrow at 10:15 p.m. Who's taller, Michael Jordan or LeBron James? LeBron James at six foot eight. So, if you're a sports addict, Siri offers a lot of cool new features. You can also show me the movie trailer for Brave. Which movie were you interested in? I couldn't find any movies matching Brave. Normally Siri will show you a video trailer. You can use Siri to schedule reservations, find a movie to watch. A lot of new features are coming. One other really nice feature is when you toggle Siri on, if you have Bluetooth connected, you'll have a small icon right here to switch between your Bluetooth headset and using your iPhone's internal microphone. Another really nice feature is Do Not Disturb. So if you go into Settings, you can turn Do Not Disturb on or off. The Notification Center controls Do Not Disturb. What this does is allows you to manually or to schedule certain times where notifications, incoming phone calls, texts, any notifications from apps won't make noise and alert you on your phone. So if you need to have your phone completely silent for a meeting, or you just want it to go silent at night, this is a cool option for you. You can allow calls from favorites. This way, your wife, parents, whoever can call and get through even if Do Not Disturb is on. And there's also a repeated call feature so that if you turn this on and all of a sudden someone keeps trying to call you because of an emergency, their second call will come through. 
Another really cool feature is built into the phone app. So now when someone calls, I have the option to remind myself to call them later or to reply with a message. I can decline or answer, or if I slide up, I can reply with a message and say, I'm on my way. And it's automatically sent. I don't have to take the time to text it out or answer their call. Especially useful if you're just getting somewhere and you'll be at the meeting right away. If you have a Mac running OSX Mountain Lion, you'll really like iCloud Tabs. What this does is it syncs the tabs from your iPhone, iPad, iPod Touch, and your Mac with the newest version of OS X to the cloud. So if I tap on my bookmarks, I now have iCloud tabs. This allows me to see all the tabs open on my other iOS devices and on my Mac computers. So I can tap it and immediately open up the article that I was reading on my computer. So this is great. So I have a long article here about why it's worth upgrading to OS X Mountain Lion. I've started this maybe on my iPhone and I want to pick it up on my Mac when I get back. I don't have to send it, I don't have to save it. As long as this tab is open on one of my iOS devices, I can access it on my Mac and vice versa. Carriers like AT&T, Sprint, and Verizon aren't completely sure how they're going to charge or allow you to use this new feature but in iOS 6, you can make a FaceTime call over 3G and hopefully over 4G LTE on the iPhone 5. All you have to do is make a FaceTime call like you normally would. You'll see we're on 3G. And we're going to dial up Sean Ingram here, who writes for GottaBeMobile.com. Now previously, you couldn't make this type of call over a 3G connection without jailbreaking your iPhone or some kind of hacks. So it's nice to see this come to the iPhone. So now, if I was out, say, on the Golden Gate Bridge, and I wanted to share that with Sean, I could do that. Hi, Sean. Hello. Just testing out FaceTime over 3G. If you use mail on the iPhone, you can now set VIPs. What this is great for is making sure you don't miss a message from your boss, uh, partner, someone whose email you want to be notified of right away, even if you don't care about email notifications from anyone else. With this, you get a special VIP inbox, similar to Gmail's priority inbox, although it's all manual, and you can also set up custom alerts for these select individuals so that you don't ever miss a notification or email from them. In iOS 6, Apple's told Google Maps to get lost and is rolling out Apple Maps. This includes 3D maps with satellite view for impressive views in many major cities. But even better, we have turn by turn directions. Now Apple has left out transit directions but has built in support for third party apps to make use of that. So we're still able to get walking and driving directions on the iPhone. So here we're able to pull up some directions. You can choose multiple routes and we can say start and get our directions. And this will walk us through and provide all the directions you need to get from one place to the next. I've been using this to drive and walk over the past month and it's very close to Google Maps in terms of accuracy and usefulness. I do like how it handles if you get music or if you have music playing and you get a phone call or directions come up the map will kind of fade and your music will fade to the back while it tells you what to do but it won't pause or completely cut out your music. The only place I've noticed real issues is if you have a big interchange uh, with lots of roads intersecting and exits stacked up right on top of each other. It still isn't perfect at telling you where you need to be, but this is still beta, so hopefully those bugs are ironed out 
when iOS 6 comes this fall. Another new iOS 6 app is called Passbook. Now this has the potential to be a digital wallet for your iPhone. When it first arrives, we're not going to see that digital wallet, use it as your credit card, but we can use it for some other wallet type things. Here you'll see a few examples. Have an Apple Store gift card for 150 bucks, so I could show this in the Apple Store instead of carrying around a gift card. I also have a 20% off coupon for dog food, so I could just show that at the register. The nice thing about this is there's no need for NFC built in, so this will be available on the iPhone 4S and iPhone 4, and I believe also on the 3GS, although I'd have to double check that. I can carry around my reward zone card, and even tickets to a movie from Fandango. These are just a few of the things that Passbook can do, and we're hoping that Apple expands this to cover making purchases, even if it's just with users that take a lot of photos on their iPhone will really love this new feature. So PhotoStream keeps your photos in sync between all of your iOS devices. But if you want to share, iOS 6 has that covered. You can now do shared photo streams. So I've created this photo stream where I'm sharing just a few of my photos. So I don't have to share every photo I take. Maybe I create a collection of just our puppies or a collection of our vacation and anytime I add a photo to that it'll appear in the shared photo streams of whoever I share it with. There's also an option to make it publicly viewable on iCloud.com although I haven't been able to test out that feature yet. If you like to wake up to music iOS 6 has you covered. The new alarm clock will allow you to choose music. So if you're sick of the marimba waking you up and you don't want to use one of your ringtones, you can simply pick a song from your iTunes library. So I have a song here. You can tap it to get a quick preview. And now that's what I'll be woken up with. We've already talked about social sharing, but sharing in general receives a much needed overhaul in iOS 6. Pretty much any place where you see this little share icon has changed. So instead of the cramped pop-up with limited options, we now have many more places to share. Mail, message, Twitter and Facebook, but we also can print right from here. And my favorite, because I like to share web addresses not from these default apps, I can hit copy and take it with me. I can also add it to my reading list for access later. These options or similar options are available anywhere we see this little share icon in iOS 6. Apple hasn't brought Notification Center up to par with Android in terms of clearing notifications or just general interaction, but they've now added the ability to share to Twitter and Facebook right from the Notification Center. So just pull it down from anywhere, hit tap to post, and you can start going. You can also choose who you want to share your Facebook updates with, but there's no real way to tag people. This is just for simple updates. In addition to everything Apple has shared, there are some secrets. For example, there is a redacted feature that Apple only shared with specific developers at WWDC back in June. Now, these developers have posted on Twitter that it's really exciting, it's going to do amazing things, but of course none of them are spilling the beans as to what this surprise feature is. We don't think this secret feature has anything to do with NFC and Passbook, uh, but we're hoping that it really blows our mind. We expect that Apple will announce this on stage with app demos at the iPhone 5 launch event where they'll reveal the iOS 6 release date. So stay tuned, head over to gottabemobile.com to check out more on iOS 6.